Greetings to the Lady Zaleka. Greetings to you also, Warden. Were you able to force Yusarsif to obey? No, my lady. He won't change or obey. Making him obedient isn't hard. But you couldn't do it? I sent this Hebrew slave to prison so you would shackle him and keep him hungry and thirsty and punish him. But you've left him to himself. My great lady, he who wishes to escape is shackled, but Yusasif does not wish to escape. He who is gluttonous is kept hungry, but Yusasif barely eats. He who has done wrong is whipped. But Yusasif has done no wrong. So it's true then. Yusasif has fascinated all of you. Honestly speaking, that is true. I think Lady Zolikir here is justified to be attracted to him. He is amiable. I have asked Karimama to talk to him in his cell. Take her to him. Guard, take Yusasif to the visiting room. What is it this time, Curry Mama? Is Lady Zaleka still having the previous dreams? She forgot eating and sleeping some time ago. But you, she has never forgotten. Then I pity her. I wish she followed her wisdom a little, instead of following her whim all the time. A wise lover? Zaleka is not a lover. Do not mistake lust for love. Love is sacred and does not live in corrupt hearts. You call Lady Zaleka corrupt? My gods, if she allowed it, I'd force you to surrender under torture. But what can I do when Zaleka prevents it? Zaleka knows Yuzarsif will not surrender. That is why she doesn't allow you to be harsh. I love Zaleka and will help her to achieve her desire, be it lust or love. I am not after your freedom, but Zaleka is. I have come here for Zaleka to show you the way to freedom. How much do you love her? As much as my life. I love my creator more than all my existence. I wish to please him, not Zaleka by my deeds. I promise you one thing. If you obey and please Zaleka, you will be freed at once from this awful place. Tell Zaleka Yuzarsif does not want freedom at the expense of sinning. She shouldn't sell her soul to Satan. Do Egyptian women not value loyalty to their husbands and chastity? 
Despite all my love for Zuleika, I must admit she is an indecent woman. How can she, despite the presence of the great Potiphar, be after a man such as you? If Zuleika knew the real and beautiful God, she wouldn't fall for a mere servant like Joseph. O oh Lord, save Zaleka from the darkness of the prison inside her and illuminate her heart with the light of faith. Keep him here until he rots and dies. He shall never see freedom. Not as long as I live. Move! Zuleikar is a gambler who's lost whatever she had, but refuses to admit it. She pretends that she is cruel, but she is not. God's greetings to you. God's greetings to you. I want to see Prophet Jacob. Why do you want to see him? I brought him a message from a young prisoner in Egypt. A young prisoner, you say? Yes. Follow me. How did he look? How tall was he? How old was he? He was quite tall, and he looked 30 or 32 years old. Was he not beautiful? And was he not called Joseph? He said he couldn't say what his name was, and his beauty was not visible behind his long hair and beard. Joseph's beauty is visible even behind a cover. No. Nothing would be able to obscure it. He asked about the leader of Canaan. I named you. He asked about twelve strong, fruitful branches. I said one had been severed. Why didn't he say his name? Why couldn't he say it? My Joseph would have said his name. He'd say it for his father's sake. You said he had a message. Yes. He said... Pray for prisoners in a foreign land. May God free him from prison. The prisoner said, Whenever you pray to God, pray for the children who are separated from their father. It was my Joseph. The son separated from his father is my Joseph. Did you hear, Benjamin? It is your brother weeping in separation of his father. Calm down, father. What can Joseph be doing in Egypt and in prison? Besides, his description does not match Joseph's. I feel that the prisoner is my Joseph, or he knows something of him. He said something about being God's messenger and the severed branch, but I've forgotten it. May God save that prisoner and take him to his caring father. May God illuminate his father's heart by uniting them. I'll leave with your permission. May God be with you and reward you handsomely. I hope these eyes 
have seen my Joseph. I hope so. Goodbye. 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 Oh Lord, answer the prayer of the needy prisoner in Egypt. Your Eminence, the commander is here. Greetings to the High Priest, Eminent Sankmahu, Amenhotep III, the Pharaoh of the Egyptian people, has invited Eminent Sankmahu to a grand feast held in the Palace Hall. It is hoped that the High Priest will grant honor to the feast by accepting the invitation. I appreciate the Pharaoh's invitation, and I will attend. You may leave. Why did you accept? It may be a plot. There is no choice. The invitation is equal to an order. Disobeying the order will be declaring war. However, if Apophis has made an attempt on Amenhotep's life, we may have been accused of instigation. Not accepting the invitation would be confirmation. But what if the feast is a trap, your eminence? Padiamon must order his soldiers to be ready to take action in case of danger. We too will invite some of the city's noblemen. To ensure Amenhotep cannot do anything against us in their presence. Obviously. The followers of Amon are so numerous. Amenhotep would not dare to insult the High Priest. All right. Prepare for the feast tomorrow. Greetings, Excellency Harmhoff. Thank you. We've come to take Apophis, Inarus, and Priest Kimini. Yes, Your Excellency. Please wait here. Prisoners of Apophis and Inarus, get ready. You are leaving. Calm down. Calm down. You must go to Amenhotep for trial. Apophis. Apophis. Trust in the God you believe in. Submit to his will. If you stay alive, we will meet again, and if you leave, be sure we will join you soon. Today's the third day. The signs of Yusasif's interpretation of the dream are becoming visible. Get up, Apophis! Hurry! All right. All right. To meet your creator. Priest Kimini as well. Be happy, you'll die a faithful man. If 
If I leave the prison alive, I'll visit Amenhotep's cupbearer. Do you not want me to bring you clothes and food like Mimisabu does? Not for me. But bring them some. In a roof. Pray to God that he grants us freedom as soon as possible. Of course. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Hey, Apophis. Don't worry. Yuzar Sif's predictions are wrong. I promise. Nothing will happen. Open the door. Priest Kimini, time to leave. Where to? I don't know. Some riders have come from Amenhotep's palace. Shackled him. You gave me faith, Yuzasif. And I try to keep it. You're not going to Amenhotep. You will have your previous position. Amenhotep met me once. I have a good memory of him. Remind him of me and tell him I am innocent and imprisoned for no reason. Of course. Be sure I will help with your release. Come on, Lord. I will. Goodbye. 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 Don't forget Goodbye. us. Goodbye. Don't forget Goodbye. us. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come back for us. Don't forget us. Hey, don't forget us now. Be sure Pharaoh Amenhotep will free you, and soon. I wish we too had someone to ask for help. What did you say? That Amenhotep will free you. He's powerful enough to do that. But... But I know someone more powerful than Amenhotep. Why didn't I ask him? Excellency Kimini, is that you? Ah, Apophis! Elarus, what are you doing here? Don't play the fool. We've been in prison for months, but none of the temple priests came to help us. And why should we? How is your imprisonment related to us? You are no priest. We're in prison because of you. If I weren't handcuffed, I'd bash your teeth in. Then perhaps you'll remember you were meant to help us, filthy pig! Cover their faces. They can't be recognized. Move. Hurry. Apophis? 
I'm Opus. Did you talk? Yes. I couldn't bear the torture and said everything. Didn't you think of the life of your family and relatives? <laughs> torture and lashings do not let you think of anything. It's happened now. I know you won't carry out your threat. It's not too late. Deny everything. Be sure the temple will avenge you severely. He confessed in front of everybody. There's no use in denying it. Say you confessed under torture, and you confessed because you were afraid for your life. Potiphar is not a simpleton. He won't accept that. There's no other way. If you don't deny everything, you lose all your family. Shut up! Be quiet! Don't take it seriously. You haven't done anything wrong. God was present here, seeing everything. Hey. And yet, I asked Inarus to remind Amenhotep of me. I don't understand. If Amenhotep knows you are innocent and helps to free you, is something wrong with that? If I make others hopeful of the mercy of the omnipotent God, how can I myself ask for help from others? It was neglect. Neglect. You only wanted the Pharaoh to know how you were, and to be informed of your innocence, that's all. When God knows and sees my innocence, there is no need for others. I apologize to my God. I repent. I made a mistake. possession. Woe to those who request from anybody but him. Many people shall be exposed if God appears with justice on Judgment Day. Many secrets shall be revealed if he looks into hearts with justice. Many rulers shall be captives if God helps the oppressed. Many eyes shall cry blood if 
the sinners realize the vileness of their deeds. Have you come to inform me of the punishment for my sin? Calm down, Joseph. Hurt not yourself so much. I know I have sinned. I shan't forgive myself. The very same knowledge is the blessing the Beloved has bestowed upon Joseph. These very same endless blessings have made Joseph a who made me dear to father and others? God, in whose hand lies glory and agony. Who granted me a luxurious life in the palace of Egypt's governor? God, in whose blessings. Who saved me from the trap of Zaleka and the other Egyptian? God, who prevents the faithful and chaste servants from committing adultery and immorality. Then, why did I ask for help from others in the presence of God? Joseph not weep blood for this sin. Must Joseph not pick his hair, scratch his face? I have sinned. I made a mistake. I repent to God Almighty. Joseph did not realize his mistake not repent to the Beloved in this humble manner. He would be expelled from God's kingdom and would lose his prophethood. Joseph was destined to be in prison for one year, but now some more years have been added. So that Joseph makes up for his sin and guides the prisoners. Joseph will need help from many followers in the future. I accept imprisonment, even if it is for a lifetime. The fact that the Lord is still kind to me. I am grateful. I truly am. Forgive me. I disturbed your sleep. Always pray that God not take back from us the faith he has bestowed on us. Always say, Lord. Always say, Lord, darken not my heart after you have guided me. Have you taken the necessary precautions against possible dangers? Yes, your eminence. The soldiers' slaves are armed. 
There are some armed soldiers among the people, too. I've ordered them to attack if something happens. Try to control yourself. Do not get angry uselessly. Excellency Pettyoff, your weapons. Now enters the ruler of Egypt, Pharaoh Amenhotep III. Well, well, eminent Sankmahu, the high priest in the temples of the Egyptian gods. Welcome to today's feast. Greetings to the great pharaoh of Egypt, Amenhotep III, the greatest pharaoh of all time. Does eminent Sankmahu really believe the title he is using? We have no doubt. What I say is honestly believed. The priests in Amon Temple consider all pharaohs of Egypt to be demigods. I ask you, the heads of the temples, if one conspires against the life of the person with the title you have just said, how do we punish him? We believe the tail-bearing of the pernicious people has given the pharaoh a suspicious opinion of the temple priests. The pharaoh can be sure that the backbiting of the informers cannot reduce our loyalty to the pharaoh, even if his highness is angry.
Today, in the presence of the aristocrats and noble people of Egypt, a play will be performed, whose main characters are Eminence Ankmahu, Excellency Padiyama, Apophis, and Inarus. Well, Eminence Ankmahu, do you know them? Yes. If I am not mistaken, they are the cup-bearer and table-decker of the Pharaoh. Will you reveal their connection to the temple? Or should I ask them to reveal everything? The temple knows them only as Amman worshippers. There exists no other connection. So, Apophis, do you deny the connection between yourself and the temple, and Eminent Sagmahu? I don't know what Excellency Potiphar is talking about. The connection to Agmahu, the attempt on Amenhotep's life. Tell us about them. I never had a connection with Eminent Sagmahu. But you confessed before the prison guards that Ankmahu had paid you 1,000 gold coins to poison the Pharaoh's drink. Other people witnessed that confession. I don't confess. Never. The confession was because I feared for my life. What about trying to assassinate the Pharaoh? Why did you do that? It had nothing to do with Eminence Ankmahu or the temple priests. One day, the Pharaoh reproached me and became angry. I feared he might find an excuse to kill me, so I decided to move first. Do you know the punishment for trying to kill the Pharaoh is death? Is it not better to expose the main culprits so they'll be punished too? Excellency Potiphar, why do you insist on portraying the temple priests as accomplices? He denied his connection to the temple in front of everybody. What exactly are you trying to prove? Feel not assured, the play is not finished yet. Well, Priest Kimini, what were you doing in front of Zavira Prison asking about Apophis? Because of his crying wife, Excellency, and his children. They had heard no news about Apophis. I hoped to give them good news. I searched everywhere. When I went to Zavira Prison, I was arrested by your troops. But Apophis has already confessed in prison that he went to Ankmahu with you, and he was paid to kill the Pharaoh. Confession under torture is worthless, Excellency Haram Hub. You mean you are not connected to Apophis or Inarus at all? and played no role in the assassination attempt on my life. No, Your Highness. We have no connection. And you, Apophis, 
had no connection to Kimini or Ankh-Mahu. No, Your Highness. I had no connection to Kimini or Eminence Ankh-Mahu. So, you and Inarus made the plot to kill me? No, Your Highness. I knew nothing about it. He is right. He knew nothing about it. I made the whole plan myself. I asked him to help me, but he refused and informed you. Get out of my sight before I lose control and have you killed. Their present has saved you. If you do it again, even Amon will not be able to help you. Get out! It is an insult to the gods and the temple priests. They are infidels. They insult Amon. These insults will not remain unanswered. You idiot. You sacrificed your life for Ankh Mahu. If you told the truth, you'd be safe now. I sacrificed my life for my family and relatives. Free in a Rus. But Apophis will be hanged tomorrow as a lesson for the others. You, Kimani, go. But know that very soon I will reveal the temple's many crimes and will hang you all like Apophis. Go. The play is over. Everybody out. Finished with the defeat of Amenhotep and the victory of the temple priests. Everybody out! Sagacious governor could not prove such an obvious crime. Ah! You said that everything would be all right, Excellency Potiphar. 